Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this special episode. I really want to talk about climate change and why it's so important. I'm here in downtown in the city of Toronto. Hey, what's, what's this? Hey, Ken. Trevor. Want to go for a ride? Let's go for a ride. All right, well, as you can see, my old pal Trevor Page from Tesla Owners Club. Did I get that right now? Tesla Owners Online. Tesla Owners Online. Okay. <laughs> Club, forum, everything. You do it all. Try to. How you been keeping? Been doing all right. Well, you know, the COVID thing's been keeping us yes. uh, somewhat busy as much as possible. YouTube views are down, but that's, you know, that's kind of par for the course, right? We get through it. We're still here to inform and entertain. <laughs> uh, maybe not necessarily in that order, but we try. Well, thanks for helping me with this re review and impression video of the brand new Tesla Model Y. This is one of the first ones that have been delivered here in Ontario, uh, in the lovely city of Toronto. And I want to thank uh, Sam, the owner. No last names, because we don't want you to go hunt him down. He's a gentleman for letting us uh, uh, review his vehicle and take it for a drive and kick tires and all that stuff. So let's get into some impressions on the Model Y. Now, this is a beautiful car. I love it. We've had a quick chance to look at it. But, you know, what I'm hearing on the internet, and I brought you in because you're the expert. <laughs> on when it comes to Tesla, is is this really just a Model 3 on steroids? What's going on? Well, Elon has said many times that the Model Y was developed very quickly because they wanted to share about 75% of the parts with the Model 3, although I personally I think it's more like 50%, somewhere in that vicinity. But what they really did is that they took all of the same drivetrain, the same seats, mostly the same interior as the Model, y, as the Model 3, and actually just stretch it in many different directions. Now, there are some differences with the Model Y compared to the Model 3. It's actually very efficient, mainly because they switched to a very efficient uh, heat exchanger pump for mm -hmm. the HVAC system rather than, eight, uh, rather than a, a resistive heater than the Model 3. So that allows it to actually have almost the same range as the Model 3, despite it being heavier and have less aerodynamic efficiency and obviously being a, bitter, uh, a bigger car. Well, you know, it's a beautiful size, especially for the Canadian marketplace, as you know, Compact SUVs, CUVs, whatever you want to call them, throw another UV into the mix. They are all the rage here in Canada, especially when you get outside the city, people are really wanting these machines. This has more height, a lot easier to get in and out of, it has, it seems to be more interior room. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm being decept deceived on that, but uh, tell me, what, what do you think about those impressions? I think this is perfect for the market. Here in North America, we're still nuts about SUVs and CUVs, so this is a perfect all-electric vehicle from Tesla. Um, I think your impressions about the interior space is mostly because of the fact they actually stretched it from a height-wise, right? Uh, they use the same interior seats as the Model 3, they just put them on risers, so with that comes a taller headroom in there. And that's largely because you need the headroom for the second row and the third row seats, so you actually have to go a little taller on that. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's got all the same uh, you know, DNA as the Model 3, it has the same performance. Now this is an all-wheel drive car, so it mm. still has the front and the rear motor. They also have a performance version, and sometime next year they're going to release a standard range, which will be a cheaper car than this. I hope so, because uh, they do need to get uh, in a little bit more into the entry-level pricing, because it's not cheap. Gorgeous car. How is this compared height-wise and room-wise to the Model X, which you are very well versed and experienced with? Yeah, I used to own a Model X. I think this is about three quarters to 75%. Well, maybe that's the same number anyways, but <laughs> it's very, very close to the Model X. Um, it's actually a little shorter. Uh, it's certainly less wide. It's about three inches wider than a Model 3, whereas the Model X is actually, it's about 88 inches, somewhere in there. I don't quote me on those numbers, but the Model X is actually a very imposing hulking vehicle. And I know for me that you get used to that, but it's actually nice to have something a little bit smaller, especially for tightly parking lots. So I think they've, yeah. they've done the, the right thing with this car and take most of the proportions of Model 3 and just adjust them where they need to be uh, to, to fit into that market segment. It seems that Tesla has really learned a lot in the, in the last three, four years with regards to building and execution on the Model 3. And it sounds like they've taken a lot of what they learned, you mentioned the DNA aspect, into what they've done in the Model 3 and just honed it and refined it a bit more for the Model Y. It's no secret that Tesla went through hell getting the Model 3 to market as far as production was concerned because they went from building maybe 50,000 cars with the S and the X combined to almost 400,000 cars and uh, yeah that production took them a lot longer than they anticipated. Then a nice thing about it is that they learned from those mistakes so they were able to bring the Model Y to market much faster than they actually anticipated and right now we're sitting I mean we're about what five months 
actually a little less than that because of the COVID situation because they had a factory shut down. Mm -hmm. So now they're, uh, the VIN numbers are in the 16,000, somewhere in that vicinity for the car. So they've actually been able to ramp it a lot faster than the Model 3. So that bodes well for Tesla being able to you know, to, to fix from their mistakes and learning and uh, actually play with the big boys sure. now. Um, I'd like to talk just a little bit about some of the characteristics. I mean, you know, is, is it got the beautiful front uh, up front. Um, is that a similar size to the Model 3 or is it bigger? As the, front the front trunk, front? Uh, on account of the car being taller, is actually deeper. It's about okay. the same width, about the same depth, but it's definitely deeper than the Model 3. Right, right. And of course, being a hatchback, is what a lot of people were asking for in the Model 3. Now they get it in the Model Y, so you get a lot more space, um, as, as you see uh, in some of the B-roll that's running here. It's, uh, and I love the way that the seats fold down with just the push of a button, uh, so it gives you that aspect. You certainly could camp in it and sleep in it. Um, I know in the Model 3, we had you lie down and uh, and measure that out. It's much more easier than here in the Model Y. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to camp out in this thing, it's even better now because uh, through several software updates ago, they added a camp mode now so they can actually maintain the interior cabin temperature all throughout the night. Very nice, very nice. Well, it's a lovely uh, it's a lovely vehicle. The interior is basically identical to the Model 3, at least from the front part. Uh, wonderful seats. I love that they do sit higher, so entry and exit into the vehicle uh, is a lot easier. Uh, you kind of almost slide straight in uh, rather than having to get down for some of us old folks here that, you know, it's good to start getting any younger, on. We're not getting any younger. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, but, you know, it, it still has that same simplistic approach to the dash and to the instrumentation, which, uh, you know, I, I know that when we covered the Model 3, that was probably one of the biggest complaints that we heard was, gee, it's so minimalistic. It's got one screen. How am I going to figure it out? I tell you, you know, you and I get into a lot of different cars, right? We get access to vehicles and we drive different things. You know, I, I recently got into a Model 3 for a little bit of time about a week or so ago, and it was took me about a minute to figure everything out and go. You know, and nothing about the instrumentation or the lack of having a binnacle came into play. I know in the early days of the Model 3 that there was a lot of digital ink spilled over the fact of the simplicity, and now it's literally nobody ever talks about it anymore because it's just the new norm. Uh, matter of fact, when I get into other cars that are not simplistic, I feel overwhelmed. So, you know, it's the new normal. If you're used to one thing, it's hard to adjust to something else. But once you get adjusted to this, it's hard to go back to something else. So um, the fact that they're actually doing this uh, in the Model Y and, of course, with the new Cybertruck certainly shows that, that this is the direction that Tesla's taking a more simplistic single screen interior. Absolutely. And from a specs perspective, it comes in two versions currently, a long range all wheel drive, as you mentioned, and a performance edition. The long range, of course, the batteries are all the same. They're 75 kilowatt hour batteries, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but, but tuned, if I use that word, to be more efficient. The Performance Model 3 actually is uh, a little different. Um, they have uh, better drive inverters in there to extract more power. It has larger 21 inch wheels. It has bigger brake calipers, bigger brakes. Um, the suspension is slightly lower. Uh, the acceleration on the Performance Model 3 is 3.7 seconds, 3.8 seconds, zero to 60. The all wheel drive is like 4.8. Yeah, here it's showing five seconds, but I'll take 4.8 for sure. <laughs> Who's gonna figure out two Don't forget, of sandba a Tesla sandbags their numbers. That's so true, they're actually they better in real life. Not their pricing, but their numbers. <laughs> Uh, you know, both vehicles have very good max uh, cargo volumes of uh, just under 2,000 liters, 1,900 and change. Um, as Trevor mentioned, uh, very fast accelerations, uh, speeds that you will have no problem getting up to speed on the highway or passing that truck on your way to Ottawa. I mean, a top speed if you're on the Autobahn, hitting 217 is very respectable. That'll keep you up with probably 60% of the traffic on the Autobahn. <laughs> if you've driven it, you know what I mean. Uh, range now is excellent for a car of this class and this size and this weight. EPA estimate of 509 kilometers, and I'm hearing that might even be more. You mentioned the wheel sizes, Trevor, already, and seating. Now, this is a five-passenger variant, but I do understand that there will be a seven-passenger variant. What can you tell us a little bit about that seating arrangement? Well, there's been a lot of talk on the internet about how is Tesla going to fit a third row in the Model Y, and I think I have the right answer for this. Now, if you're familiar with the Model X, which is Tesla's larger SUV that has a seven and a five-seat variant, the second row seat is actually a bench seat. But what they do is they, they put it on sliders. So you can move the seat forward to yeah. allow for ingress and egress out of the third row, but it also gives you the leg room for the third row passengers. So that's, like I'm 99% sure that's exactly what Tesla's going to do here in the Model Y. So if you look at this car and you see the five seat variant and you go, well, there's no room to put a third seat back there, that's because the rear seat or the second row is not on sliders yet. That will come in a future update. So they will not be rear facing, they will be front facing. That's at least what I saw in the first prototype when I was at the reveal event back in March of 2019.
So if you haven't heard it first, you've heard it second here because Trevor will have had his show aired already. <laughs> you've heard it there Send first. Send the check later, Ken. Send the check later. Uh, again, this does not come with free supercharging that I'm aware of, uh, so they don't give you that. And your standard basic warranty, you know, four years, 80,000 kilometers for uh, whichever comes first. But for the battery drive unit, typical eight years, seems that they've upped, upped it to 192,000 kilometers, which shows their faith and confidence in the battery system. The battery pack on the Model 3, which is also the same thing found on the Model Y, is virtually indestructible. They have stress tested this thing. It is very robust. Uh, Tesla does have a battery investor day coming up soon where they're going to reveal yes. even better batteries. But for now, uh, yeah, rest assured you're not going to have any issues with the battery in this car. Well, now that we told you a lot about the vehicle, let's take it for a drive and we'll tell you about how we feel about that. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, well, I'm here driving the Model Y and, you know, it's a, I mean, the experience is very similar to the Model 3 other than some of the weight and size um, that you'll notice once you get driving in this thing. Um, but it's really, really pleasant drive. There's nothing that's disappointing in this vehicle. Um, again, it's the same fit and finish that you'll find in the Model 3. Very comfortable dash layout. The seats are extremely comfortable. Um, whatever Tesla has done to improve the seats over the years, it shows. Love the positioning. Uh, the visibility is excellent in this vehicle, even though it has the hatch with a bit of a smaller window, uh, rear glass in it. You can still see everything. Nice, large size mirrors. Um, again, and all the basic functionality is there from the signals, from the stocks. Um, again, you know, a lot of people talk about the minimalistic display and all that kind of stuff. Now, the suspension takes the bumps and uh, knocks on the, this road. It's a bit of a, uh, not a really well-maintained road that I'm on right now, um, and it's taking it quite well. Again, I believe that the suspension may be a bit more softened for this vehicle because of the extra weight that it has. It certainly feels like it. The handling is quite crisp and nimble. I know that you can change um, characteristics on the steering input, um, change it to, you know, make it softer or make it more tight if it's in a sport mode type environment. Uh, I find just all the general settings to be quite adequate um, in, in the, uh, the Tesla experience. Again, just a very nice experience, very quiet. Um, again, this road isn't the best maintained. We're not doing super fast speeds, but uh, it is a noticeably quiet car, in my opinion, than I uh, than I uh, heard in the recent Model 3 that I took out. Um, it does it does seem quieter, and uh, again, very nice, pleasant experience. Everything is easy reach, and again, the touchscreen, 15-inch touchscreen touch being right here, is easy access. So overall, the interior, as I mentioned, is a very pleasant experience. The only difference is that uh, I've been able to decipher on this versus a Model 3 is basically you get a little bit different car view uh, when you see it on the screen and that there's a switch to open the powered rear hatch, which of course the Model 3 doesn't have. And this would be something that would be quite easy to be driven on long road trips. Very nice, very nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this special episode of a review of one of the first Model Ys here in Ontario, Canada. And I want to thank my special guest, Trevor Page, for coming out. I can't my shake his hand, but we'll, you know, we're still trying bumps. to do social distancing as much as we can. Uh, thank you very much for coming out. This is a, a beautiful vehicle. Tesla is going to do quite well with it. It is expensive on, on the pricing scale, but you know, uh, again, their quality is coming through. Yes, there's some little things. There's a little fit and finish issues, a couple of small things. The owner picked up some stuff that I would have never noticed, to be honest with you, is a couple of things. You know, I know you guys that really know Tesla can see it all, but it seems that they've gotten much better in that aspect. I've Your never I've never owned a brand new car that didn't have issues. Every car has issues, especially at the first part of production until they get it sorted out. This car is not going to be any different. Absolutely, but it's a wonderful, beautiful car. Drives fantastic. Uh, you're going to love it if you get to one of these. So obviously it's a strong recommendation in my book. Glad Tesla uh, was able to build something of this caliper and this vehicle class that a lot of people are clamoring for. And uh, definitely recommend going out. And the best of luck to Tesla and the best of luck to you, Trevor. Thank you for coming out. Anytime, Ken. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see you again. Good to see you too. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching me on YouTube, for subscribing, liking. If you dislike it, like, whatever, do what you like. I'd love to hear your comments. I always try to respond to everybody's comments, so appreciate that. Always humbly thank you for anybody who supports me on Patreon. It really helps to keep things going and uh, helps me with my commitment to the show, so very much appreciate it on that. 
please, we're still coming out of the lockdown status, so I appreciate and I encourage everybody to follow their local health guidelines. And if it doesn't feel safe to you, then it probably isn't. So use some common sense and judgment as we continue to come out of this, want everybody to stay safe. And again, keep following the EV revolution because even though auto sales and some of these sales are slowing down, things are still moving in migration and uh, moving forward into the revolution. So until the next show, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.